And the movie begins, with us the viewers being informed of the death of a famous celebrity known as Anna Fritz, as we see her body being wheeled into the morgue. Unlike the incredibly normal, well-adjusted member of society that he is, the morgue worker proceeds to immediately take a picture of this body's face like a completely sane person. The hospital worker, Pow, is then met by two of his friends, Javi and Ivan, who proceed to do drugs and drink alcohol like normal hospital visitors while asking Pow to show them pictures of Anna. And apparently not valuing his job very much, Pow proceeds to sneak both of his friends, as well as their drugs and alcohol, into the basement area of the hospital to visit the morgue. From the get-go, it's apparent that Harvey is hesitant to be doing this, as he doesn't really like the idea of seeing a dead body, as I guess they smell kind of funny. But he's constantly being egged on by the more aggressive, outgoing Ivan, who seems to be the one who controls the situations and really wants to see some dead chick. Once they're in the morgue, they anxiously wait for Pow to pull back the covers to reveal Anna, but when he does, it's a naked dead old woman. The best pranks always involve naked old people, but this time he shows them Anna for real, before Ivan takes it upon himself to pull the sheets down to reveal her body, as he then begins groping her. Javi is evidently disturbed by what he's witnessing, while Pow almost seems to be enjoying the fact that he could accommodate something like this for his friend. Disturbed, but not down with the sickness enough to not touch her for herself, after being peer pressured into doing it by Ivan, he touches her. And after they're done, probably breaking some kind of law, they then proceed to break another, as all of a sudden they seem incredibly interested in the smell of sugar for some reason. And after it's ingested, Ivan heads back over to the table, but this time he completely removes the sheet to uncover her body, before beginning to talk with the other two about the completely normal activity of sleeping with a corpse. As you do. And without much pressure really, motivated by Ivan's sick endearment, Pow then admits to have actually done it before, as if it's some kind of great accomplishment and not some serious crime, that he can share with his friends. Which motivates Ivan even more to begin talking about the possibility of them doing the same with Anna, while Harvey seems to be incredibly uncomfortable and downright disgusted by the situation. But all the while, Pow has the look across his face of someone who thinks this is a good idea. It's not a good idea, Pow. Bad boy. Still thinking this is a terrible idea, Javi keeps suggesting to the other two that they leave, they should just attend the party that they were originally heading to, where the beds are a lot softer and the women are a lot warmer. Also alive. But Ivan seems to be of the mind that he prefers his women on the colder side. And Pow, seeing absolutely no problem with the horrific crime that's about to take place, takes Javi into a back room so Ivan can be alone with her and contemplate his life choices. With Pow clearly liking to engage in this kind of sick behaviour, he also seems to like to witness it too, as after being told to leave the room, he peeks through the slightly open door to watch Ivan engage in a behaviour that can only be described as not very nice. And as soon as Ivan is done, Pow wastes no time in heading out there for himself, as he absolutely loves the idea of having his best friend semen all over him. But whereas Ivan is more of the type to just get it done and finished, Pow is more of the romantic type apparently, as he puts his finger in her belly button. I knew he was weird. He climbs on top of her and begins, and after a while, Anna suddenly wakes up and opens her eyes, but seems to be completely paralysed as the unaware Pow continues to use her, without being able to move or cry for help, only able to stare ahead with an absolutely terrified expression. Pow suddenly looks down and screams as he sees her awake, because there's absolutely nothing more terrifying in this world than a woman. The other two come to investigate why Pow suddenly sounds like a 12 year old girl, and they see for themselves that she is in fact quite the opposite of dead. Which now only makes Ivan and Pow think about what they've done, not because they violated this poor woman, but because they violated this poor alive woman, meaning that there's going to be consequences. Javi immediately begins to comfort her, telling her that she's going to be okay while giving her a glass of water, when suddenly they hear someone coming. They cover her up and hide as an orderly enters the room, bringing in another corpse. Anna, barely able to move or make the slightest of noises, desperately tries to get the attention of the orderly, but every little bit of noise she's able to produce is done in vain as the orderly is wearing headphones and not paying attention. And once the hospital worker leaves without noticing her, shutting the door behind him as he goes, all three head back out into the room to discuss what they can possibly do to get themselves out of this situation. Javi wants to take her to safety as fast as he can, while Pow and Ivan realise that there's no easy way out of this for them. She's seen their faces, and they look weird. Scrambling for any ideas, Ivan suggests that because everybody else already thinks she's dead, then they should just kill her, because apparently that's just as easy for him as violating a dead body. 
Javi, thinking that this has gone on far enough, grabs the mortuary table and begins wheeling her out of the room, when suddenly they realise they've been locked in and that Pao's keys were left outside when he took his incredibly professional work break. Not deterred, Javi begins calling out for help, causing Ivan and him to break out in a fight, as in an apparently controversial take, Javi isn't too keen on the idea of killing someone. But while they're fighting, Ivan realises that Javi's hit his head on the floor and he's now bleeding quite badly. Once again, scrambling for any way to get out of this situation without killing a second person, they plan to hide Anna, Javi and Ivan in the back room while Pao uses his pager to get someone to let him out. Then once they've got the door unlocked, they're going to place Javi somewhere in the hospital where he'll be found and make it look like he was robbed. And robbed he was robbed of his life. As after the door is unlocked and the blood has been cleaned up, Ivan comes back in the room to find their friend lying there lifeless in a bloodied slump in the corner. And Ivan, like the good molestery murderous friend that he is, proceeds to immediately perform chest compressions, but it's too late. Pow then also returns to find Harvey dead and Ivan crying about it, as he's just learnt that these little things called his actions result in these big things called his consequences. While Pow is freaking out at the sight of his dead friend, Ivan pulls him aside and begins manipulating the situation by telling him that not only did he do what he did to Anna, but now he's also an accomplice to Harvey's death, so that the only way they're going to get out of this is that they stick together and see this through. And by see this through, apparently Ivan means throwing Harvey's body in the trash, Frank Reynolds style. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. And while the other two are out of the room, Anna, slowly regaining her mobility and control over her voice, rolls herself off the bed and crawls over to Javi to find his phone. But suddenly, the pair enter the room to see her using it before taking it from her and realising that it's too late. She's already made a call. So using this situation to her advantage and her skill as an actor, she tells them that she called her father but tries not to anger them too much by saying that she only told them that she was awake. So realising that their fun night of putting their peckers where they don't belong and bashing in the brains of their best friend is over, in the ultimate walk of shame, they begin wheeling her out of the room, fully expecting to face the full force of the consequences. But suddenly, Harvey's phone begins to ring, and as a confused Ivan answers it, he comes to the realisation that the person on the end didn't answer the phone before, and that's why they're ringing back now. So, with no one apart from them actually being aware that Anna Fritz is indeed alive, and thinking that they've just been granted the second chance of a lifetime, they wheel her right back to the cold clinical setting of the morgue. Furious that he almost gave himself up due to her lies, Ivan wraps his hands around her throat and slaps her, while threatening to brutally violate her again if she dares try anything like that again. Ivan leaves to try and find something to discreetly transport Javi's body out of the hospital in, and while he's gone, once again spotting a chance, understanding that there's absolutely nothing physical she can do to free herself, Anna begins to use her mind. She takes the chance by attempting to manipulate Pau into thinking that Ivan strangled Javi to death while he was out of the room. Because maybe, if she can create enough internal conflict or scare Pau into helping her, there might just be a way out of this. With Ivan still not back, Pau begins cleaning up Javi's blood in the back room while Anna is restrained on the table. So while he's distracted and taking advantage of the fact that Pau clearly was never a scout as a child, she manages to untie the restraints and drop to the floor. With her wrist still tied up, Anna begins to use the tried and true slug manoeuvre and begins slowly crawling across the morgue floor. Eventually Ivan does return after being forced to hide due to some employees taking a smoke break and the pair then realise that they've just been outsmarted by a paralysed dead woman. Men, am I right? Channeling their inner mystery ink, they split up and begin searching for her, with Ivan at one point walking out directly in front of Anna, but looking in the opposite direction. She just manages to drag herself into another room, a mere second before he turns around and sees her. She's forced to hide amongst the pipes and machinery, and eventually she's able to get her wrists free, and even after regaining a lot of control over her body, her legs still aren't working quite the way they should be. But after managing to get to her feet and slowly moving her legs, she's able to get out of the room undetected. But making like Ed Sheeran, her legs don't work like they used to before, and she collapses to the floor, once again being forced to drag herself. She manages to get all the way to the elevator, the elevator that will take her up to freedom, and just as the doors are closing, Ivan suddenly appears, before grabbing onto her and violently dragging her down the hallway, 
smashing her head into a door frame. And with them all back in the morgue, Pow then confronts Ivan about the death of Harvey, which seems to completely confuse Ivan as he's like, well yeah, I did kill him, you watched. So with Pow choosing to believe him, or just feeling like there's nothing that can be done about it right now, he carries on listening to Ivan as he says that they need to kill her without leaving a mark because they don't really need to be creating medical mysteries, like how did this already dead corpse strangle herself to death? Deciding to use a bedsheet, Ivan then tells Pow that he needs to be the one to do it, because if Ivan does it and they get caught, then he'll be the one put in the naughty corner for killing two people. But with Pow hesitating over the idea of killing this terrified defenseless woman, Ivan suddenly grabs onto his hands and forces them both to do it together, because there's no better way to bond with your friends, quite like murder. And after she urinates all over them, she eventually goes limp. And now if only those two went limp earlier, then they could have avoided this whole big mess. So with the dead woman being dead again, they throw Ivan's corpse into a wheelie bin, because I guess the dead can't be materialistic, with Ivan taking the body away, while Pow is left behind to clean up Anna and any evidence that may have been left behind. You know, like the blood, drugs and sperm, because apparently they decided to make one big party out of it. Ivan drags Harvey's body to the side of the road, giving his corpse disposal methods about as much effort as he gives to trying not to molest dead people, with Anna and the room fully cleaned. Pow is seconds away from leaving after the weirdest night shift of his life, when suddenly Anna begins to cough as apparently she's just respawned. Pow, suddenly having a change of heart about the whole killing the innocent thing, pulls the cover back and tells her to pretend to be dead. And as Ivan returns, he feels like there's something that he's forgotten. So he pulls back her sheet for himself, as I guess the thing that he forgot was the fact that he just killed her. But with her looking dead enough to him, the pair begin to leave the building, when Ivan suddenly remembers what he forgot, his card, that he was using for all of his sugar smelling activities. So with him heading back, despite Pow trying his best to talk him out of it, he opens the door to see Anna standing there like a deer in headlights. Or should I say, a famous celebrity in Ivan's field of vision. Thinking that Pow is trying to frame him for the crimes, he grabs him by the throat before throwing him to the ground. But while he's distracted, being far too angry at the concept of facing any kind of repercussions for his actions, Anna stabs him in the back with a pair of scissors before thrusting them into his neck, because who needs that much blood anyway? And with one already being down, Anna decides to go for the double kill, with Pow somehow not realising that he could be in any danger right now, as he walks right up to her with his stomach exposed, giving her the perfect opportunity to plunge them right into his insides. Repeatedly. How do you like having your insides non-consensually touched? And with the three men behind this being very much dead, and the victim being very much emotionally traumatised for the rest of her life, the movie finally receives its happy ending. And with the corpse of Anna Fritz being covered, I can now add it to the playlist of videos involving the genre of people sleeping with the dead when they're not actually dead. So before this video comes to an end, I'd like to just give a massive shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons, the people who every week, despite YouTube making it incredibly obvious that they're not fond of the type of content I make, continue to help support the channel. And if you wanted to become a YouTube member or a patron, not only do you get access to a private Discord server, but you also get access to all uncensored versions of videos. So starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a big thank you to Icebreaker Baby, Tim Visser, Rick Bentz, Janik Shuster, Kate Parry, Planet SMG, Melquire to Bone, Dredge, Francisco, Mindless Zebra, Gaddy Frederick, Daniel Combs, Loki Doki Doki, and Ghost Rider. Now heading over to this week's Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Zoya Jansens, KP, Victor, Jonathan Baker, Matthew Fries, Sage Beth, Jagger, I'm Hex, Ike DeBoa, Aim Lax, Sylvan Solaro, Isaiah Barnes, Stefano, Arento362, Diego Herrera, you can call me Jeff, Bayram, Some Dude, Clayton Bigsby, Eli Yahia, Zierra Young, Griffin Ward, Cookie Monster, Ashen Games, Manson Sons, Bren Krausen, Zachary Bula, and Caleb. So once again, a massive thank you to all YouTube members and patrons, and a huge thank you to everyone else for watching.